Hello. Happy Friday, beautiful beans. My sweet, sweet, beautiful little beans. Is that what you guys are? The, I think, the beans? You are the beans? The Friday beans? Hello, Friday beans? Hello, um, beans? Beans? You are the Friday beans? I don't know. The, the, uh, the something. Anyway, something. Sure. Um, Happy Friday. So today we are going to be chatting about E-Rank. I do want to give quick disclaimers, though, that Mark and I just got back from vacation last night. So we're a little sleepy. We literally have not even unpacked yet. It wasn't it wasn't like a crazy vacation. It was more like us hiding away in an Airbnb away from everybody um, and our beautiful remote location that uh, looked like it was advertised as being like secluded in the woods ended up being next to a tunnel and a train bridge. Um, we didn't sleep the whole time. Nah, we were there. The vacation itself was nice, but I got literally zero sleep for like five days straight. It was like the cars going through the tunnel they would get louder and louder and louder. And then when you thought mm -hmm. that there's no possible way they could get any louder. They get much louder. It was northeast Pennsylvania up in the kind of mountainous area. So it was mostly big trucks and people with too much money with loud sports cars. Yes, it was very loud. Um, but if we seem a little laggy today, that's why we're still kind of acclimating. Yeah, we're, we're, getting, um, we're getting used to life, <laughs> but that's okay. Handmade Alpha Academy students, if you guys emailed us over the weekend mm -hmm. or, or the week, I guess it wasn't weekend, week, um, we will be getting back with you uh, mm -hmm. right after the Friday Bean. But today we're going to be looking at E-Rank. Uh, one of the main questions that I get about E-Rank is... What is most important here? What do I need to be using? What tools are are essential? Um, or or you just log in and you see everything and you don't know where to start. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to try my best to go over as many tools as possible. I believe Anthony Wolf should be here in the chat or he will be um, popping in at some point today. Um, so hopefully if there are any tools that, you know, there, there's a couple tools that I don't personally use over at E-Rank. Um, even being a manager, there are some things that, you know, that just don't um, fit my particular business model. And I think that that is a common misconception that people have is that they believe that when they log into E-Rank that every single tool is something that you need to use. But when in reality, nah. Anthony Anytime there is somebody who says, I make this and I would like a tool that does this, can you create it? A lot of times Anthony will say, sure, I'll make that tool. There he is. Um, Hi, Anthony. But because of that, some of the tools aren't going to be useful to every business model. For example, um, you know, the color thesaurus is a tool that not a lot of people know exist. And that's a very specific tool that only a very specific type of person is ever really going to need. So... What we're going to do today is cover some of the basics, and then I'm going to show you the tools that I personally feel are the most important or the ones that you should be using the most frequently, um, because every single tool within E-Rank has its uses, but not all tools are things that you need to be in there using every single day. For example, you probably don't need to go in and use the color thesaurus every single day. You probably don't need to use the profit calculator every single day, unless, of course, you're reevaluating your pricing strategy, right? There are certain tools that aren't really daily use tools, but then there are tools that I think you can get a lot of use out by looking at every single day. So that's what we're doing today. Um, hello, Bubbers. He's he He's has very been... affectionate because he hasn't seen us in five days. Yeah. Um, if we want to go ahead and get everything can. shuffled. No, less than half of our audience will be here yet, but that's let's okay. Let's go ahead and did you want to go ahead and screen share? Yeah, you can go ahead. Um, and I did want to point sure out today. Nothing... Our, our charity for um, July is for water.org. We have so far this month raised $151. Thanks to those of you who have donated so far. Water.org is a really cool organization that not only provides clean and safe drinking water and water for sanitation purposes to areas that don't have clean water, but they also help to actually create clean water solutions. That way, some of these areas that would otherwise not have things like plumbing can have access to clean water and, you know, they can make sure that those areas are actually getting, um, you know, the equipment installed in their local area so that they can actually turn on the tap in their home and have access to that clean water. So please consider donating if you enjoy today's stream. 
Um, I'm ready to go. I think we're good to go. Thank it's you, also Abyss pretty Wears. nice, man. You're tan. I'm not going to have to put as uh, strong of a loot on your face anymore. You're did not I, quite so pale. Did I get a we little... Got, we got a little bit of tan over Just our a little. vacation. We're swimming every day. Yeah. Okay. On to screen share. Mm. All right, guys. So right when you log into yes. eRank.com, you're going to land on the tasks page. This page is something that we implemented, I think, a year ish ago. Anthony, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. It feels like it's been about a year. Uh, but the tasks page is just a way to help newbies. If you don't know exactly what you're doing or you don't know how to navigate, this page is an option because it can tell you exactly where you need to go if you want to track your competitors, if you want to do keyword research. These are just some of the common locations that you might want to visit. But ultimately, you can find all of these things by going to your dashboard or by navigating these little menus up here. If you don't want to see this page anymore, you can also click don't show this page again. Um, if you're already familiar with how to navigate E-Rank, you don't need to land on this page if you don't want to, but it's just a nice little way to kind of see what some of the most popular tools are here at E-Rank. It also can give you an idea of the tools that you should be paying more attention to, like the competitor tracking tools, like performing keyword research, which is obviously why most people use E-Rank, um, looking at the top sellers on Etsy, looking at top trends, pricing your products, and managing your orders with things like our delivery status report. So let's go ahead and just go straight to our dashboard because this is where I think a lot of confusion takes place. Okay, I'm not going to worry about refreshing data. Right now we're just logged into our AlphaDapt test shop. Most of the time um, you should do that. Yes. Now, I want to point out that I have not connected yet to uh, Google Analytics 4 because I do want to create a video on that eventually. Um, so this little area is going to be a bit inaccurate. Um, and if you guys have data, it likely already means that you've connected to Google Analytics 4. But if you do have traffic stats set up on your end and you already have Google Analytics set up for your Etsy shop, you can connect that Google Analytics account to your E-Rank account. That way you don't have to try to sift through all of the data within Google Analytics and try to decipher it for yourself. I know that it's really confusing. I struggle with it. So have Having the most important things already displayed to you right from your E-Rank dashboard can help to eliminate a bit of that uh, confusion. What in the heck is GORP Core? I have. Somebody let me know what GORP Core is. Maybe be careful Googling it, though. We... Yeah, maybe be careful Googling that. <laughs> All right. So popping onto your E-Rank dashboard, this is the central hub for all of the important information <clears throat> on you know, with your Etsy shop and with Etsy in general. Um, over on the right side, these are good to know things. For example, our blog posts you can find up here in E-Rank News. Whatever our top three blog posts are, our most recent, are going to be located here. But you can also click See All Updates. For those of you who have questions about how to use specific tools, this is a great place to find information about those tools or little tricks and strategies. I think that a lot of people don't realize that we have a fan fantastic blog. We have weekly blog articles. And most of those blog articles are, are very useful. Um, but we also update the ones that are a little bit out of date. So for example, if you have a blog article like our, our um, uh, top keywords on Etsy, where um, our amazing Jan will create a blog article about some of the top trending searches, we update that every month. So you, even if you have the old link, it's going to show the newest version of that blog. So consider checking that out. This is the top keywords on Etsy for June 2023. But there's a lot of other really great articles, including how to set up your Google Analytics account. So be sure to check that out. Everybody says that uh, Gorp Core is wearing outdoor stuff as a fashion statement because oh. Gorp is a type of trail mix. Oh, like the good old raisins. And peanuts. And peanuts. That would be gore wrap. Gorp. Gorp. Good old raisins and peanuts. There's an A in there. You don't use and or two in acronyms. I would. I like gore app better. Gore app. <laughs> Trending on Etsy. You can toggle between different countries if you want to see the top uh, 10 most searched terms in the past week. Uh, so, for example, in the USA, summer jewelry is number one, but we can pop over to France. And um, I don't know what this word is, but feel free to let me know, all you French people. Personalized can, something. <laughs> jewelry, jewelry for the UK, Canada, summer so jewelry. Spell things wrong. It's fine. Australia, t shirt. Alice in Wonderlands. And Geschenk. 
Yeah, I my personalized kashank. Um, I don't, I don't really speak. Humongous enough. entertainment. <laughs> I don't, that was a weird one. Also, uh, be careful, even with being top keywords. Uh, Barbenheimer, that's a copyright thing, and obviously Barbie. Barbenheimer is, it's a, I think it's a play on, uh, because Oppenheimer and Barbie what? are the two popular movies right now, and they are polar opposites on the scale, so people are doing the Barbenheimer. Oh, Unless really? I'm completely wrong. Let me know if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Oh, that doesn't sound right. I but... saw a meme about it earlier. Oh, okay. I'll take your word for that. Feel free to let us know. Croissant. Croissant. Um, Personalized croissant. All right. So another area that you guys have probably seen before that you might have questions about is this little fun area up here. I, I commonly see people who will post in the groups and they'll say, uh, E-Ring says I'm the top in the top 80% of sellers, but I've only had, you know, X number of sales. Is this right? And yeah, it is. Um, the cool thing about your sales rank with E-Rank is that there are a lot of people who start Etsy shops and then never really do anything with them. So this is accurate, but we also have to remember that a lot of people start shops and then they never sell anything. So this is just a little bragging rights section. Makes you feel good. Um, it, I was it, right, by the way. It, are you right? Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah, you would People be... seeing both Barbie and Hop Oppenheimer in a double feature. Got it. Because they're literally polar opposites. Got it. Got it. Okay. okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. I, think I need to go see Oppenheimer. Scrolling down. I just have a bunch of random people um tracked in my mod party, mod party, mod party. In my in my top sellers. Um, but you can track some competitors. I'll show you guys how to do that. You've got your spotted on Etsy. So this is going to show you um any of the words that you're tracking in the monitor tool, if you are ranking for those terms in the top, is it top 100 searches or top two pages on Etsy? It will tell you what page you're ranking on. So for example, our shop is mainly just me and Amber Marie. Um, and we can see that Amber Marie terms are ranking on page three for mm -hmm. a lot of these. I don't know what resist hoodie is or why we're ranking for it, but. It's sure. Sure. Um, your superstar keywords. These are the keywords that you most want to be known for. You can see the most sales on Etsy. These are some of the top sellers on Etsy and how seed many sales. Geeks, bro. I know Seed Geeks. They've they are super. I, I love their shop. Um, Caitlin Minimus or Minimalist has a beautiful shop as well. But this is how many sales that they made In yesterday. Day, day. Yes, and the marketplace popularity. If you want to compare, you know. Um, how popular different marketplaces are, which, you know, to most of us, this isn't super relevant, but if uh, you're trying to decide whether you want to sell on Amazon or Etsy, might be something interesting to check out. I really wish that that Printify integration with Walmart worked better. I keep hearing um, people trying to set that up and it not going over very well, but I was, I was really hoping that that would, you know, work well, because I think that that's a great opportunity for POD suppliers, so... Anyway, all right, so let's go ahead and head to our listing tab. So if we click on active listings, there's a lot of really cool things that we can do from this page in particular. No. I'm not even going to worry about refreshing data. For one, something that we recently added is you can see the grades of your listings right here from your active listings page. Now, keep in mind a couple of things about grades. You can have a listing that, you know, does relatively well. And it might not have the best grade. We've actually made some changes so that if your listing is selling, your grade actually stays good um, because that's sending us good signals that your listing is performing, it is selling, therefore your grade should reflect that. But keep in mind that our grading system isn't telling you that you need to go change all of your keywords at once or that you need to go touch your best selling products. Grades are just a way to see how well you followed Etsy's best practices. So think of it kind of like a checklist where Etsy says that short descriptive titles are better than big long keyword stuffed ones. Now, in terms of the algorithm, from what we can tell, they both work. It, it really just depends on your target audience and what they think of those big long titles versus the small concise ones. We see listings that do, you know, very, very well with those big long titles, especially when you explore the top sellers report and start looking at some of the, the top selling shops on Etsy. Some of them have big long keyword stuff titles because the algorithm doesn't seem to care either way. So, Really, what this is telling you is if you you have a listing that isn't selling and the grade isn't great, maybe that's
that's a listing you want to spend a little bit of time on. Um, but it's not telling you that the keywords that you're using in your listings are good. And it's not telling you that you need to go change all of your listings to achieve those A grades. I like to think of this as a good thing to use when you're creating new listings or when you're improving listings that aren't doing well. Um, as always, our golden rules of Etsy SEO are to never touch anything that's selling well. Ever. Ever. Other than pictures. If you need to update pictures, right. that's fine. And never <clears throat> change all of your listings at once because... If you're changing everything at once, you never know what changes you've made are good and what changes you've made are bad. And, and it's better to mess up just one of your listings, say that you made some bad choices on your SEO. It's better to change just one listing. That way you have a you know chance of recovering it if the changes that you've made aren't the best, rather than changing every single listing in your shop. Um, I had a comment on my YouTube uh, channel two days ago from somebody who said, oh, E-Rank sucks. I changed all my SEO and got straight A grades and then all my sales stopped. And I'm like, yeah, well... Um, Probably shouldn't have done that. Um, not really the the best strategy to go in there and change everything at once because you don't know what worked. So um, there's a couple different things that you can do over here from our active listings page. But one of my very favorite things that you can do is to track your listings. So we have a couple listings that are already tracked. Let me find one that I haven't tracked yet. Okay, we'll do this one for example. So if you click track changes. Here we go. What this is going to do is take a daily snapshot of this listing. That way, if you make changes to your listing, for example, maybe you change your title, this will show you how those changes impacted your views, your favorites, and your sales. Now, what we typically recommend is that you start tracking one of these listings maybe a week before you make any changes. That way you can see what your, you know, normal views, favorites, and sales look like with your old keywords. And then you can tweak those keywords. Thank you, dear. Mm -hmm. And then come back a week later and you can see exactly what the impact of those changes was. So um, let me take a look. I had a listing that sold recently and I want to see, I think it was this one. Oh, and I didn't track it. I thought I had that one tracked. Well, fudge. We'll go ahead and show changes on. Um, I don't think that there's going to be a lot of changes on this one. I'm trying to find one that might have some positive signals. There's one. Okay. So, for example, we can see that on this day, our blue hoodie had one extra view over on total views. You can see that in green. Now, um, if our, for example, if we have one of these sell, our quantity available, we'll see a little negative number in red. So just know that that little red indicator, that doesn't mean something bad. That just means that you've sold one. You can also see the keywords that you've used in your title and you can see your tags over here. And if you change one of your listings or you edit, for example, your title, it will highlight the exact changes that you've made so that you can see exactly what those changes were. That way, in the event that those changes do not positively impact your listing, you can go back and look at what you changed and you can change it back, which I think is super duper useful. And it's something that not a lot of people realize if you I mean, it's hard to remember what changes you made. Right. And if those changes don't help you, it would be great to know, you know, what those changes were so you can switch it back. And this is a great way to do that as long as you turn on that tracking before you make your changes. So that's why we usually say track for maybe a week, make some changes. And then you can go back in here and see what those changes actually did for your views, your favorites, and your sales. Is it okay to change a listing to a higher price? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, it doesn't have any impact on your search ranking unless somebody's specifically filtering by price. Um, it doesn't really have any impact on your, um, you know, on on how your product is going to rank. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh our data. And switch it back to our faces in case that takes a minute. Sometimes it does. 
I haven't refreshed the data in a while for this particular one. I so. should have waited. I figured that maybe we should uh, go ahead and... There are no questions. There's no questions. I don't think so, no. Pretty sure people are just watching. Awesome, awesome. We'll move on to uh, the next listing page next. Anthony said that Seed Geeks rocks from spring to summer. Purchased yes. a bunch of seed packs from them in the spring. Awesome. Good, good quality stuff. That's great. How did they come packaged, Anthony? What's it like buying from like one of the top Etsy shops? I bought from Mod Paws, which is um, from the brand mod party who's usually in top sellers they also own they mod, mod party yeah that i bought from mod paws which is their pet brand and the experience was really nice it was like super fancy very well packaged uh after you've identified competitors what should we do with this information under other than under than determine what is causing okay. their successes I'm just not entirely sure what to do beyond this, or is this in the course? I've not made it that far yet. We don't really talk about competitors too much in Handmade Alpha Academy, simply because it's not something that I want you guys to obsess over too much. But we haven't gotten there in today's demonstration, so once we get there, we'll we'll okay we'll talk about it very soon. Okay, there we go. All right. So um, another thing, we talked about those A grades. You can click the listing audit. This is going to give you that list of suggestions that we talk about, things that you might want to change if you've got some listings that aren't doing well, that aren't selling. Remember, A grade does not mean that your listing has great keywords. This is not based on keyword data. This is just saying that you have done all of the things that Etsy says are important. So um, let's see. You can add your superstar keyword. So whatever keyword you most want to be known for about your products, and you can get some SEO tips for your listing based on those terms. So could we just type in maybe tie-dye hat? How do you spell tie-dye? T-I-E-D-Y-E. Hat. <laughs> That's okay. No, it's not. <laughs> He's, he, he... Again, my we were uh, on vacation for like almost a week, and my daughter and cats woke me up multiple times, so I still haven't gotten any sleep. <laughs> All right, so there we go. So we can see tie-dye and hat, tie-dye, hat, hat, tie-dye, hat, all in our description. So this is basically just telling you that the terms that you most want to be known for are located in the three places where it matters most to have those terms. And if not, you're going to have a little red X here that says, ooh, you want to be known for tie-dye hat, but you don't have tie-dye hat anywhere in your description. You don't have tie-dye hat anywhere in your tags. You don't have tie-dye hat anywhere in your title. Okay, so let's take a scroll down. You can yep. see your stats for that listing. Anthony said, competitors are great for ideas. See which of your competitors are doing well at this time of the year. Get ideas for new listings, tags, image ideas, pricing. Absolutely. Agreed. And if you're not selling very well right now and you're in, you know, rather than posting in the Facebook groups and saying, is it slow or is it just me? Go look at your competitors, see how they're selling right now, because if they're not doing very well right now, then you know it's not just you. You know that it's just a slow season. So we've got, let's see, this listing has sold multiple times, although there may be tips for changes. Always be careful when modifying listings that have a good sales history. So these little red boxes, anytime you see those on E-Rank, make sure that you read them because a lot of the times they're going to be sending you little warnings and things to keep your listing safe, to make sure that you're not changing anything that could harm your listing's uh, progress. So we've got a little warning here that our listing title might be a little bit long, that it sounds like it's written more for a computer. Again, this is just a suggestion. It's based on Etsy's best practices. Etsy's best practices state that we should create titles that are short and descriptive and friendly to our shoppers so that they can quickly read and identify what you're selling. However, experiment with both and see which types of titles work best for you because both do work. It just really depends on how your shoppers are going to view those longer titles. So I recommend experimenting with both, which is what I always do, um, and see what works best for you because your target audience is truly going to dictate what type of titles are going to do um, well for your specific shop. Kaylee said, I didn't know the description was for important for ranking. It's not very important for ranking. So what Etsy told us during their Etsy Up event, I actually have this, um, if you watch my video that posted on Tuesday, I have the exact clip from Etsy. 
And what they say during the Etsy Up event, their actual like SEO guy, the main, the head of their SEO department, he said that they're not looking at description for that um, that exact matching or that, um, what's the term I'm looking, What what's the term that I'm looking I for? I can't, I can't focus because Taylor is being so loud up there. I'm going to tell everyone. Yeah, she's being so loud. Um, they're not using... For query matching, that's the word I'm looking for. They're not looking at our descriptions for query matching, which means that they're not necessarily trying to match terms up exactly. They're really looking for context in our description. For example, styles. If they notice that you primarily purchase uh, art deco products, for example, and they you know, are, are showing you all of these different um, listings for your search query, if you're searching for home decor, but they know that you mostly search for art deco. And they also notice that one of these listings has put somewhere in their description art deco, they might be more likely to match you with that particular listing. Another example that I like to use is if you are a shopper that has a history of maybe you buy from black owned Etsy shops, for example. And Etsy has identified that that is something that you commonly do. And maybe nowhere in it, somebody's listing title and tags have they put, you know, that they're a black owned Etsy shop, but maybe they mention it in their description. That could be a way that Etsy might personalize that user experience a little bit more where they're mm -hmm. sp specifically looking for context in that shopping journey um, and, and trying to better match you with the type of product as a shopper that fits into the unique style that you have told Etsy in the past that you're interested in. And that is exactly what Anthony and I said it would probably be when yeah. we first started talking about adding descriptions. And did you say that it was the first 150 characters? Because that's what they said as well. Somebody also mentioned it. The yeah. first first 150 characters of are, the description are the most important. Yes, that's really, <laughs> that's what they said that they're really looking at because they know that that is the part of your description that a customer is most likely to read is that first 150 characters. Whereas Google is looking at your entire description. So um, that comes from Etsy directly. Make sure that you check my video that I posted on Tuesday um, because I actually have the full clip from Etsy. If you watch it in the Etsy up event, you kind of have to like, it's a hour long event, but I have that specific section cut out so you can watch it all together. So scrolling down, um, the we have all of our, our listing stats. So these are specific things about your listings, your views, quantity, how many favorites, when it expires, yada, yada, things, you know, just good to know information about your listings. You've got some little tips for your title. So again, your title might be a little bit long. Your title might be hard to read because it is, oh, there isn't any punctuation in this one. We might have been trying to test. No, we tried to write this one as a short descriptive sentence. It's just a long descriptive sentence. Yeah, it's run on. 90s tie-dye themed handmade alpha embroidered hat with a traditional dad style baseball cap six panel fit. So that is a, you know, a short sentence. But again, this is a computer. It's not reading. There's not a human giving you this feedback, right? So make sure that you're using your best judgment. Now, this little highlighted section here that we see, this is the part that your customers are going to see on a search page. And we want to make sure that the most important terms that actually describe what our item is, that those terms are right in the front. Don't lead those titles with great gifts for mom if your product is you know, a, a tumbler, for example. You want to make sure that you are actually telling your customer what that product is. Because if they're looking through your photos and they're just glancing and they can't quite identify what your product is, they're gonna read that little itty bitty snippet of your title that's visible on a search page to get more context and to better understand what it is that they're looking for. And if it takes them a minute to try to figure it out or they can't quite understand what it is that you're selling, even if it seems super obvious to you, then they might scroll right past that item. So just make sure that you are filling out those sections. We've got our tag analysis, so you can take a look at the performance of some of your tags. Again, we just kind of toss in a bunch of random tags because this is kind of our experimental alpha shop. I love how I'm the most searched keyword on here, of course. Um, but this is going to give you a great idea of times of year when your products are most being searched. So for example, 70s flower power 
when we first lint listed this product, it looked like it was getting some searches, but now it's not. So this might be a good indication that, okay, we might be able to take this term out of our listing and maybe put something else in there because the competition isn't too bad, but we've got some unknowns on here. So this is just gaps in E-Ranks data. It's kind of a long, obscure term. Maybe we cut it down to just flower power or 70s flower, for example. Baseball cap, we can see, was very popular in July of 2022. Those searches kind of fell a bit, and then they popped back up in January and February, and now they've gone down a little bit, so it's kind of an up and down trend. You've got your attributes. So these are basically those little drop down menus that you fill out when you're listing a product. Um, just make sure that you're adding those relevant to your product because they Etsy does tell us that they act like tags. Um, I recommend, especially when it comes to holidays and occasion, make sure that you're not listing holidays or occasions that are unrelated to what your product is. For example, someone might think that this lovely cup uh, would make a great Christmas gift. However, it's not a Christmas cup. There's no Santa Claus on it. That does not mean that it qualifies for a Christmas attribute just because it would make a good gift. So make sure that you're filling those out as accurately as possible based on what your item is. Yes. Um, and then obviously we have our sections like our categories, your description. Here's our full description on our product. We've got our images, sales history. There we go. Okay. What you doing next? Let's see. We've already done track changes. Compare listings. You can pop in the listing ID or the URL of several listings if you want to compare those. I don't have any on hand at the moment to do, but this is a great way if you want to compare stats of, of different listings. Let's see. Draft listing is fun if you've got some listings in your drafts that you're still working on and you want to kind of go over those. Now, we'll go ahead and skip some of these because, again, links, for example, if you want the link to your listing, you can grab it here. It's, it's you know, just easy access for some of the things that you might need to grab or use. Um, but ultimately, this is why we say <laughs> that not every tool on E-Rank is something that you're going to actively be using every day. You know, you don't need to go in here and look at your listing links every day. But I do want to show you our new listing helper. You guys might remember that this was in beta for a little while. This is our really cool new AI tool. Um, just keep in mind that as with any AI tool, this thing is not keyword optimized. It's not tied to our keyword data. So you do want to do a little bit of your own research. But if you've researched a great superstar keyword, this could be a fun opportunity to get some ideas on how you could craft your listing. So let's do like, uh, let's do the tie dye hat. Let's do tie dye hat with a multi colored bill bill and a small pancake on the front how about small embroidered yes. pancake this is this is not a product that we actually sell but no it is not this is just a random thing okay all right. Now, this one is great because um, you also have the history of the different changes or the, I'm sorry, the different queries that you have submitted. That way you can go back and see all of the queries that you have submitted in the past. They'll be over on the right-hand side. That's something that we added. We also added buttons to copy your title ideas mm -hmm. and description ideas. Um, there's a couple different examples that you can unique, use. Unique tie-dye hat with multicolored bill and cute pancake embroidery. Color. Introducing our uniquely designed tie-dye hat with vibrant multicolored bill that's sure to turn heads. <laughs> sure to turn heads. Well, maybe you'll turn your head and show people your pancake. This one-of-a-kind accessory features... You don't got to read the whole thing. A small embroidered pancake on the front, adding a touch of whimsy to your outfit, handcrafted with love and care. This hat not only makes a fashion statement, but it also offers ultimate comfort and sun protection. Oh, yeah. that's a cool thing that you might not remember. Yeah. Uh, Anthony said, AI listing help is great for those who suffer with writer's block. It's so much easier than to edit and come up with stuff from scratch. I agree. Absolutely. Just take it and put it in your own words. That's, that's really what I say. I wouldn't, I wouldn't 100% copy this, 
but it's a good way to get a start without having to come up with the, the brunt of what you're going to say anyway. Yeah. And, and it's a great way to also start thinking about, you know, the qualities or attributes to your product that you might not have thought about. You might be listing your cool embroidered pancake hat, but you might not have thought to put sun protection in your description. Or that it's eclectic. Eclectic. Yeah. Um, whether you're heading to a festival, beach, or want to flaunt your eclectic style. So there's a lot of really cool ideas that it can think up for you. That way, you know, if you've got writer's block or maybe you're just not a strong writer or if English isn't your first language and you're not quite sure how to write out that that description, um, this is a great alternative to using something like Google Translate, for example, which often will give you a really weird, you know, it'll make its best effort, but sometimes it's just not great. Oh. Are you can engage? Yeah, let me switch to face so I can kill this app so it'll stop doing that. Or okay. it's never gonna freaking stop doing that. Uh, I have that preference set off, so it must have uh, re-updated and changed it to on again. Okay. All right. So some of the terms related to our query, which was tie-dye hat with multicolored bill and a small embroidered pancake on the front. Um, embroidered patch. This looks like a, an okay keyword. High competition, but might be one that I would want to experiment with. Um, let's see. Embroidered logo. Summer hat. Let's see. And then a couple of these are so weird. I think it's because we typed in a really obscure type mm -hmm. of product. Um, but I like the idea of embroidered logo embroidered pancake logo summer hat couple different ones here sometimes it it is beneficial to refine your title idea because you'll be able to keep a history of it and try some different combinations try try changing things up a little bit until you hit a sweet spot and then you can go back if you liked your first query more you can just click up here and you know repopulate these past results so this one's fun um if you have any feedback on this one you're free to click our little chat down here we have a fun little chat where you can message our team right there ah it's a cat <laughs> you can see that anthony and i uh goof we goof um, missing attributes. This is going to show you any of your listings that might be missing some of the attributes in your listings, those little drop down menus. Obviously, you know, I've filled out all of our listings, so no issues found. Missing tags, missing images. We have a couple that don't have all 10 Im images. There we go. So it'll show you, for example, this one only has seven images. Um, only has eight images. So this just gives you an idea if, you know, you need some things to do to prep for the holidays, go through and see which of your listings need some more images. That way you don't have to go click all of your listings one by one. One word tags. Let's see. Oh, we do have one with a one word tag. Journaling is a one word tag. I think it's because the term was so long. Um, and then if we wanted to, we could click ignore. And we have our Tag. tags as well. And we can filter. So type in hat. Hat. No data. That's not. Well, maybe it's because we have no terms that are just hat. Um, try cap. No, that's just not working. No, I think it's because it has to be contained within one. Type oh. in 90s dad hat. 90s. No. Nope. 90s dad hat. There we go. Oh, so it needs to be exactly specific to the... Yes, your your exact term. Anthony, would it be possible to get that to broad match so you don't have to type in the exact tag? Like if it's if it starts to see the tag that you're looking for, like it if just I starts... just put 90s, would it be possible to expand that to that? So yeah. it's a little bit easier. All right, so going into our shop tab, we have our tag report. These are some of the tags that we use in our listings work from home looky there <laughs> our whole our whole uh theme for the alpha dap shop was supposed to be work from comfortable work from home attire um but this gives you an idea of those terms if you want to see if any of your keywords have died off in popularity if people are just no longer searching for those terms then you can pop those open and you know start to see like for example geometric wolf oh people were searching for that in uh november and may but now there's only you know, 20 searches for geometric wolf. So maybe that's something that isn't as popular anymore. 
We'll do champ. Let's see. Delivery status. This one is really fun. Boon to boon. So this, I really, really enjoy this tool in particular because what it's going to do is show you your outgoing orders all from one place. Now, these are, you know, a little bit vague, so not really sharing anything too specific here. But what this is going to do around holiday time, especially, is show you if you've got any delays in outgoing orders. If you have something that's, you know, popped up that you're not expecting. If, if you know, for example, there is maybe something gets stuck at a post office. This is a really great way to see what items have actually been delivered rather than having to go through your Etsy listings and click on those tracking numbers. You can see this all from one place, which I absolutely love. I think that this is one of my favorite tools on E-Rank, but it's also one that not a lot of people are aware exists. So delivery status report, really, really great tool. Um, sales map, this one is just kind of for fun. It can show you where all you have sold to uh, with your 300 most recent orders. This one's just kind of fun. It's it's more of a, you know, bragging rights if you want to see where in the map you've shipped things. Sales report. Um, this is one that we've been working on this one for a little while. Anthony, do we know when we're going to be... Are we still working on sales report? Let me know. Maybe I'll wait to show this one. I don't want to click on it. I can't actually remember if it shows anything identifiable. So let me know. Spell checker. This one's very useful because it can <laughs> it, it can give you some ideas on things that might be spelled wrong that you didn't know. You know, little embarrassing mistakes that we've made. Uh, for example, we have a lot of tamales, which... You know, that's a joke that we had a couple years ago with the alphas. That's a lot, Ooh, of that's a lot of tamales. So obviously this is a term that we want to keep. Bubbers, it's highlighted. It's asking us if we want to change it to blubbers. Bullet journaling, journaling, quarreling, journeying, counseling. No, it's just because there's two L's. It's actually misspelled. Oh, is it? Yeah, there's one L in journaling. Maybe it's just, um, maybe it's just here. V notch. Vulpus cut, that's how we've just called our different cuts. But if you see anything in here, for example, Starla Moore usually gets um, flagged a lot because Starla. Mm -hmm. He said, yes, we're working on a sales report. Big upgrade coming in the fall. Cool, cool. So we'll, maybe we'll wait for that one then. <clears throat> Traffic stats. This one is really fun, one that I wish I could show you, but I don't currently have Google Analytics uh, 4 set up. But again, as we talked about, um, Google Analytics is an amazing tool that can show you things like, for example, how many people are in your shop, like right at this very second. It can show you the keywords that are bringing traffic to your listings. It can, you know, give you ideas on, you know, the keywords that people use to discover you. What keywords are actually leading people to your your listings and, you know, what keywords are resulting in sales? Um, where in the world are these customers? Where are they, you know, when they find you? Where, where are they finding you from? These are all really cool things that you can discover through Google Analytics, but you do have to connect your Google Analytics account to your Etsy account. And if you've already done that, you need to make sure that you're migrating over to Google Analytics 4. If you go to the E-Rank YouTube channel, Pam and Anthony actually did a really great demonstration three or four weeks ago, um, you've got to click on the live tab on, you know, the E-Rank channel page to be able to find that stream. But that is really useful if you want to set that up, um, because I'm not sure when I'm actually going to get around to creating that video. Um, but it can help you to get that set up right away if you're interested in seeing some of those stats. And let's see, we can do monitor we'll start with which it's there's the spaghetti <laughs> so the monitor tool this is going to basically um, allow you to monitor keywords and see where your listings show up on search pages for those keywords i think we've just got a bit of spaghetti in here yeah for example we print on champion hoodies so we just got a couple different terms in here uh, handmade alphas, oversized hoodies, Starla Moore, Amber Marie. These are some of the terms that we're tracking. And then from there, you can use these terms on tools like
like the Spotted on Etsy tool. So we'll click on Spotted on Etsy. And we can see that for the term Star Lamore, our tie-dye hat is on page one, position 28. Now there are a couple things to remember about checking your rank when it comes to E-Rank and how Etsy displays rank. Because what a lot of people do is they'll say, well, E-Rank says I'm showing up on page one, but I searched Starlamore on Etsy and I couldn't find my listing on the front page at all. That must mean E-Rank's inaccurate. That's not quite how the rank checker works. We have to remember that for every single shopper, Etsy adds a layer of personalization to your shopping experience based on past habits that they you know, notice on the platform that you have taken. So for example, if they notice that you only click on blue products, they're more likely to recommend blue products to you. And a lot of people will try using a VPN, they'll try logging out, they'll try, you know, using an incognito window. None of that works. None of those things are going to completely strip that layer of personalization off because you're also going to get a personalized experience based on where you are in the world. And if you change your VPN to, I don't know, the UK, if you live in the US, you change it to the UK, you are going to get a personalized experience for someone living in the UK. So um, there's no way to strip that entirely because everybody is going to get different results based on their searches and based on that level of personalization that is applied. However, what you can do is see where you would rank on average before that layer of personalization is applied. And this comes directly from Etsy's API, which means that this is basically the raw data before Etsy slaps that layer of personalization on people's, you know, on their search. And then, you know, I often hear people ask me, well, how is that even useful if it's not what, you know, my real shoppers are seeing? It gives you an average. It gives you a good idea of what listings don't need attention. So for example, if I really wanted to rank for the term Star Lamore, for example, and I see that this listing would on average, before personalization is applied, be ranking on page one and assuming that Star Lamore is a great keyword, high searches, you know, low competition, awesome click-through rates. This would tell me that this is probably not a listing I need to work on. However, if we scroll down, let's see. Of course, all the terms that I'm monitoring are and Anthony had said, monitor tool is getting a big upgrade soon, long overdue, making it simpler for people to understand. Awesome. Yeah, because right now it's very spaghetti. I know that I know that we've uh, talked about that one in the past. Um, so we'll just say for this one, you know, Amber Marie, for example, this one is ranking back on page three, which honestly, that's not that bad. Um, I would be looking for listings that are ranking, you know, way back, maybe, you know, page 10, for example, maybe that's a listing that you want to do some tweaking to. Maybe you you want to do a little bit of editing to as long as that listing isn't selling. Um, this is just a really good way to see where your listings would be ranking before their layers of personalization are applied so that you know, you know, which listings you should prioritize while doing things like giving your shop a little holiday makeover, for example. All right, so let's pop over to competition. One of my favorite tools is Top Sellers. I love how it gave me the <laughs> the the bat or the banner for mm -hmm. unpaid accounts. So these are top sellers on Etsy, the shops that sell the very most. Now, don't spend every single day obsessing over this. This this is fun. This should be fun, um, but. It shouldn't be something that makes you feel sad or bad. And a lot of people spend way too much time here. They they get obsessive over it. They start like calculating out how much money, you know, uh, Caitlin Minimalist made yesterday based on, you know, the number of sales. Like, I understand, you know, that it can feel like you need to obsess over these things, especially when you're new. But This is, this is lottery stuff here. Yeah, this this is for fun. So use this as a way to feel inspired, to see mm -hmm. what the big sellers are doing, what their photos look like. Yeah, I mean, maybe one of these shops does something like what you do. If you want to track one of these sellers, you can click here and you can add it to your competitor sales report so you can get a little bit more data on them. You can also click on them if you want to see more about them. Like maybe you want to know what does Caitlin Minimalist sell? Any minute. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. 
and you can get a more in-depth look at you know what this particular seller does um how many sales numbers make me want to cry i know right total sales you can see what percentage um you know they have sold more than 99.9 percent of other shops on etsy Mm -hmm. but what i really love is that you can do a little scroll through and you know see things like their photos for example you can see what their style is we could click on this listing and take a more in-depth look into things like you know what tags they might be using can see their visibility score 100 percent. look here's a title that is a little bit longer it's it's pointing out that this is a long title and this is a top seller on etsy so and this listing's made them one hundred and seventy thousand dollars. we can take a scroll down and see some of the different keywords that they're using maybe these are keywords you want to use their maybe, shop name look they built themselves a name and put themselves as a as a title yeah and and there's no the competition tag. there Nope. Um, you can add some of these to your own keyword list. So for example, maybe I want to add, I think I've got it on my bookish list here, but I could add name necklace into my keyword list. That way I can track that term. And, you know, maybe it's a term that I'll want to use for a listing uh, for my own shop in the future. So lots of really, really cool ideas here. Um, yeah, just like Anthony had said, use this uh, top sellers, use this to learn from shops that are successful at this time of year. You can drill into those shops to get ideas, especially during the summer when it kind of sucks. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is a great time to be making your improvements because July is when we start to see those very first holiday shoppers start to kind of trickle in. I don't know who these people are or why they're so mo- motivated to shop so early, um, but it helps us to understand, you know, how shoppers think. And it allows us to see, you know, what the next few months are going to look like. So right now is a great time to start making these little improvements, especially to the listings that aren't doing very well. Um, I definitely don't recommend waiting too much longer, August at the latest, to prep your listings in your shop for the holidays, because really September, October, and November are when we see that nice trickle start to turn into a flood, okay? So let's see. I've got a bunch of random shops tracked in here. Some of them are your guys' shops. Some of them are, you know, just random top sellers. If you see your name on here, please don't think that I'm like obsessing over you. Um, I usually, when I'm recording videos, I just click to track random shops. But we can see our competitor sales listings and tags. So we'll pop open competitor sales. You can do it, we believe. There we go. go. We can see uh, Caitlin Minimalist. And maybe we think, well, Caitlin Minimalist, you know, this is my biggest competitor. All my big competitors, I will put in green. These are just your own little methods to color, categorize your competitors. Maybe Maybe this this one's red because they stole my idea. Yeah, maybe I'm like, oh, I don't like this person. They... I gotta watch out for this person. <laughs> I'll, I'll track I'll them. Watch out for this stinker. Not if 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 you're the owner of Silver Rain Silver, we're we're messing with you. We're messing with you. It's okay. I actually, Anthony, I'm I never noticed this little graph button. It, it's assigning them to see how it assigns the color, doing it in the order in which you're selecting them. Oh, yeah. I didn't notice that mm-hmm. before. That's I've never I've never seen that before. And then we can see their sales trend graphs, which this is something newer. Anthony, when did we add the sales trend graph in here? Um, We can see how many sales they have made. And I believe that it's off, let's see, estimated number of monthly sales over the past 15 months. So, um, Anthony, you said it's about... Anthony said the graph is back. It's 80% accurate. 80% accurate because it's an estimate, correct? Is that, was that the number? Um, click the show hide graph button. The hide graph button. Oh, got it. Got it. That graph. There you go. That makes sense. Awesome. We added the sales trend graph a few months ago. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Let's see. can go into competitor listings you can enter in a shop name we'll just select uh let's select hammer do it we always we always use amber as our example 
Clean and Dirty was on there too. We should we should use Paula occasionally as well. Anthony said these are closer to 98, 99% accurate. Oh, awesome. What is it? What what was 80% accurate? There was something that we added that was 80% accurate. And I can't remember because I know that Pam was saying it during one of our Q&As. But I might just be brain funking right now. Brain funking. Yeah, I got that a brain. fun. A brain funk. We believe in you. Come on, you can do it. Is it our internet or? Nah. There There's we go. just a lot of listings to look through because it's Amber Shop. All right. So <laughs> we are looking at some of Amber's listing. We can see the estimated revenue for her miniature schnauzer birthday greeting card. How many favorites she has. Views when she last edited this listing. Her estimated conversion rate. Some of the tags that she's using for this specific listing. And if we want to get a closer look at this listing, we can click on the title here. And it pops us back over to the listing audit again. So we can take a little uh, more in-depth look at some of the terms that she's using. Anthony said sales and revenue estimates and listing audit are closer to 80%. Got it. Got it. So it's the sales estimates that I was probably thinking of. Yes. And then we have our tags. We'll go ahead and... Just pick one. It doesn't matter. Okay. Maybe let... one with less listing so it doesn't load so slow. We'll do, we'll do Paula. Yeah, do Paula. Paula won't care. You sell in multiple categories. How does it decide who your competitors are? You decide who your competitors are. It's not picking your competitors for you. You have to enter your competitors and track them yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not It's not going to tell you who your competitors are. Um, you need to determine that for yourself. And there's a couple different ways that you can do it, which I can show you here in just a minute with the keyword tool. But here's some of the common tags that Paula uses for her own shop. Paula... Um, she is a massive brand. Paula, has, she comes with her own audience. Um, so you see a lot of, like, for example, clean and dirty. People search for Paula's brand by her brand name. But this shows you just some of the tags that she's using in her own shop. Um, okay, so you had asked about finding competitors for your listings. Um, I'm a big fan of popping in a keyword into the keyword tool. Just type in um, silver necklace. It would be cool to have an auto-generated list of competitors based on keywords. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Um, that we kind of do that though. So, for example, he typed in silver necklace, and if we scroll down, something that I think a lot of people don't realize is because they scroll down and they see the keyword ideas section, which is where I personally recommend looking for keywords for your listing because it can give you a lot of great ideas that you might not have you know thought of. But there's a whole lot more underneath this big table that I think a lot of people miss. So if we continue scrolling down, we can see things like, or see things like common price points for silver necklaces. We see, you know, most silver necklaces are priced around twenty five dollars. Um, there's one listing priced at twenty six thousand dollars. <laughs> Common processing times. Uh, Thirty one percent of listings analyzed have processing times of a day to two days. We continue scrolling though. And look, here are some of the top ranking products that are showing for silver necklaces. So this is a great way to find competitors. You can scroll through this list. Um, obviously it would be better if you were using a term that's a little bit more specific. So rather than silver necklace, maybe like silver birthstone mother's necklace, for example, that might be something more precise. Um, but this is a great way to find some of those competitors that would otherwise, you know, be a little bit more difficult to locate. You could also scroll through this list of keyword ideas to refine down a bit. So, for example, we can go through this list and maybe um, let's find a nice, good, specific long tail keyword. Let's do. Red Jasper necklace. Where's that? Right there. One right there. Red Jasper necklace. That's a good one. So we'll click on this one. And it has low, relatively low competition too. Yeah, that's actually not too bad. And look at those searches. Searches aren't super duper high, but the clicks are decent. Yeah, but they shot up in June. That's uh -huh. interesting. Looks like they get even, they pop up in January and October. And then we can scroll down. 
And here's some of the listings that are ranking for Jasper necklace. So you can try to find some competitors that way. All right. So keyword tool is the tool that I use the most. I think that it is the most important tool that we have here at eRank. Um, this tool is really your, your central hub for all things keyword research. Um, I, I love this tool. It's the tool that I use the most. It's going to tell you important things like, on average, how many people are searching for the terms that you're trying to use, that you're trying to rank for. Um, so the, this is the tool that I would use if you're trying to write your title, your tags, um, if you're trying to gauge demand for a product before you create it, this is a great tool for that. For example, you might be wondering, you know, are red Jasper necklaces popular? Well, you know, they're they're relatively pro popular. Now, compared to the competition, it might be a little hard to compete with, you know, 580 searches. However, we can see that in June there were some decent searches. So maybe this is a trend that really takes off. Um, in the summer, but we can also see that last year they were popular in October and January. So might be a, a keyword to experiment with or a type of product that you want to add to your shop. You can also see the most popular tags used by other sellers that are related to this term. So red Jasper necklace, red Jasper pendant, red Jasper crystal necklace, and we could click on one of these. So we'll click on crystal necklace. How would they rank so high when they have no sales but has been listed for a long time? I don't know. How are they ranked so high when they have no sales but have been listed for a long time? There's a lot of factors that play into rank. It's not just about, you know, sales. it's not just about sales, um, especially if they, and you said that they've been listed for a long time. So it's past that time of, you know, Etsy moving that listing around. Um, Nobody's bought that particular listing. I mean, it's it it's really hard to say. Anthony might be able to give some ideas, but um, ultimately, nobody really knows. Um, we know the factors that Etsy tells us that contribute to your ranking, things like the you know location uh, that you've set your shop to, things like um, you know obviously the relevancy of the keywords that you're using, uh, your customer and marketplace experience score and listing quality score. Um, and you know, if they have no sales, there's not going to be a lot of listing quality score there. So really hard to say, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, but I'm sure that there is something that's playing into that, that ranking. So now we're looking at some keyword statistics for crystal necklace. Looks like crystal necklaces were really popular, uh, in spring and summer of last year, and they've kind of popped down a little bit in popularity. So that's interesting. Still very popular though. 13,000 searches is, is nothing to scoff at. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, 22,000 average searches also very, very good. Um, we can say that they're, you know, very popular in the United States. Most terms that you look up are going to be mostly popular in the U.S. simply because the U.S. makes up a majority of Etsy shoppers. Most Etsy shoppers are in the U.S., therefore the U.S. is going to take up a majority of the pie. I commonly see, you know, when looking at terms that are very you know, simple like crystal necklace, uh, you know, dog mom shirt. It almost always looks like this with U.S. being the biggest, United Kingdom being the second. And Every once in a while, you'll get one that's like randomly huge in Canada or something. Yeah, and can Canada <clears throat> being next. Anthony said rank can be affected by a little random love too. Etsy likes to show some variety. So yeah. basically the RNG gods playing, playing fun. Yeah. And, you know, maybe it was featured in an editor's pick too, you know. There's a lot of things that that could be influencing it. So um, one thing that Anthony added by my request, it's, it's something that you guys might not have noticed, but if you're doing your Etsy tags, for example, and you just want to go down this list, you found some great terms and you want to use those in your listings, you can click these little check boxes here and copy all of these tags it says copied, and you can paste those directly into your Etsy tags. Absolutely love that. Um, Makes life much easier. You also have the thank ability... Thank you for your donation. Yay, thank you. Um, you also have the ability to click on these little stars. We talked about those previously, but I'll give you a, a demonstration of those. So we click on this star, and it will add this term to our keyword list. Now, you can create new lists. You can name your list. Or you can select a list from your, you know, all the lists that you've already created. I've got a lot of randoms in here because I've been recording videos. You can remove terms from your list. 
and you can view your list. So we'll click view list. And this is going to show us all the, the terms that we're, that we're tracking in our keyword list. It's going to show us the trend graph. So what I like is having a nice collection of keywords that you've used in your listings that you can you know, return back to within your keyword lists to make sure that they're still being searched for because every single month we get new data. We update our data yep. so that you can see if, for example, a trend starts falling. So maybe bookish sweatshirts, they were really popular in July of last year, but they've kind of died down in popularity. And maybe that's a term I don't want to use anymore. Or, you know, book talk that book was talk. very, very popular in May of last year, but has kind of fallen in popularity. So maybe that's not a term that I want to use anymore. Um, this is all for our new Etsy shop that we're building yeah. right now. But, you know, this is a really great tool for you to create little notes, to give yourself reminders, maybe all of the keywords that you use in your listings, you give them green flags. Maybe if it's a term you're unsure of, you give it a red flag. Maybe if it's a term that you're just experimenting with, you give it a yellow flag, for example. There's all kinds of ways that you can categorize, um, you can add notes. There's also the listing builder. So for example, we could add bookish merch to our listing tags, bookish sweatshirt, book talk, book talk merch, and you can copy all of these terms with one click. You can also start to craft the title with some of these terms. If you want to build out your listing title and tags within your listing builder, it is an option rather than having two tabs open where you're toggling between. You could write out your whole title, copy it, and then take it over to your Etsy listing. So it's just an option. Let's see. Um... So you can also access all of your keyword lists from the keyword lists tab to go through if you want to see all of the different lists that you've created. Keyword Explorer, this is a tool that used to be our number one and the keyword tool used to be like our number two. And now keyword tool is our dominant tool whereas Keyword Explorer isn't one that we use as much. However, Keyword Explorer gives you the option to look at different um, marketplaces. Teachers Pay Teachers is one that we recently added. I know that for those of you in the education realm, that is a huge one that you had requested. Um, but we can start to see things like, for example, Facebook Marketplace, Google Shopping, or Target. So maybe for Target, we want to search, I don't know, Scented Candle. And this is just an option if you want to do a little bit of investigative research into some of the bigger marketplaces. Obviously, targets are only in the U.S., so we're going to see a big graph for the U.S., and we can see how popular scented candles were on Target. So, and oh, look, vanilla scented candle. We even get some different keywords, 100-hour scented candle. That's very interesting. But for most cases, I use the keyword tool. Um, bulk keyword tool. This one's pretty fun. Could you put in vanilla candle, uh, coffee candle? You're going to have to Oh, go back. Can I go down? There we go. Coffee candle. Scroll uh, down, please, so they can oh, see it. Oh, sorry. Uh, strawberry candle? Um, I don't know. Chocolate candle. There you go. All right. And we want to see what type of candles should we make this season for our Etsy shop? I, I have all these ideas for different scents, but what scents are people actually interested in? Okay. Nobody's searching for cheeseburger candle, but there are 13 of them. Well, <laughs> it's only unknown. We don't know if nobody's searching for them, but it's a risk. This is a gamble, right? Yeah. Um, chocolate candle, probably not a sweet spot here. However, look at strawberry candle. That's not too bad compared to the competition. Coffee candle, also not too bad compared to the competition. Um, these two might be candles that you want to experiment with, especially when we look at coffee candle and see that in the fall and winter, it seems like coffee candles were pretty popular. So maybe that's a type of candle that you want to create. Um, I'm a big fan of this tool just for getting an idea of what keywords you want to you know, use in your listings. Maybe you're trying to decide whether to use jewelry or 
jewelry, you know, for different spellings, um, or maybe Mother's Day gift versus Mother's Day personalized gift, if you want to compare things. There's lots of different ways to use this tool, um, both for product development and for actually using those keywords in your listings. What you, what's she doing? She's got the cough. Oh, does she? Does yeah, she have she kennel was, cough? She was wheezing. She, she stayed at the kennel for our trip. Bulk keyword tool, again. Oh, wait, we already did bulk keyword tool. Compare keywords, there we go. This one is gonna do something a bit similar. Um, if you want to pop in, you know, just give me like strawberry candle and vanilla candle. Oh my goodness. I got stupid fingers today. We'll just compare these two. And we have a nice big graph where we can compare the two terms. So um, looks like strawberry candle is way, way more popular. Well, no, look here. We've got vanilla candle is at way higher in searches. So it just kind of gives you a good comparison on what time of year, um, you know, your your product might do better or you know if you want to compare terms and decide which one you would rather put in your listing if you've got two keywords that are relatively similar but you only use want to use one of those keywords it can help you to decide which of the keywords to use so 20 minute warning 20 minute warning oh yeah mm -hmm. um let's see rank checker this is great if you've got a keyword in your listing and you want to see what page you're ranking on, uh, like we talked about. This is going to be before that layer of personalization is applied, and this comes directly from Etsy's API. So this is, you know, that raw data. Um, raw. Let's get rid of AlphaDapt. We won't do my shop in particular. Let's just do silver necklace. I used to type in with big fingernails yet. All right. Oh, is she coughing? Or sounds she... like she's hacking. Sounds like she's throwing up. Hacking was the better, not gross way to say that on a oh. live stream. Oh, well, I feel I feel bad for her. I do too. We just picked her up today. Yeah, this morning. All right. We could not find any of your listings. Oh, I thought that it would give us the, yeah, there we go. So it's going to give us the ranking for those top listings that are showing up for Silver Necklace. Um, we have, this one is ranking on page one, position one, right? So very, very cool. Um, but you can also do things like, for example, eh, just type in Starla Moore. Shop name is back in there. That's fine. It's for our shop. And you can see based on your shop what page some of your listings are showing up. Just make sure that you're searching keywords that you actually want to be known for. So Starla Moore, we can see, you know, rank one, page one. Of course, Starla Moore is on there because nobody else is listing any Starla Moore products. But it gives you a, a good general idea. And average searches. Dragon House said hacking is illegal. Okay. Sometimes. Not always. <laughs> You also have bulk rank checker. Again, this one is just going to give you the option to add in multiple terms. Um, I'm trying to fly through. So these are some of our more random tools. For example, the category tool can help you to decide what category to put your listings in. So um, maybe tie-dye hat. You can describe your product, what it is, and it will give you the suggested category that you should place your listing in when you are filling out those little um, drop down menus. So as we can see, this is probably the most accurate accessories, hats and caps, baseball and trucker caps. Color thesaurus is another one that is going to be very specific to the type of, you know, shop that you are if you need those hex codes. So I'll do orange and it'll give me all the colors related to orange, their names and their hex codes. So I could see this being useful for, you know, maybe a designer or coming up with your branding colors. ROI calculator. This is a great one. This is if you are doing Etsy ads and you want to make sure that you're making that return on your investment. This is a fantastic tool to make sure that you're, you know, monitoring your ad spend um, and you are making sure that you are actually making money on those ads. This is another tool that often gets overlooked um, along with the profit calculator. So 
we'll say, let's do the price of this item is $100. 100. And it ships for $5. $5 and, and you get a 10% coupon. 10%. And then our labor cost, you know. Uh, this, yeah, we'll just say that this no. is... Labor cost, material cost, we'll do another 10. Shipping, shipping. cost to us, we'll say 5 because that's our shipping yeah. price. We'll say we're not charging extra. And then renewing, we'll say 20 cents. Okay. And we can see that our margin would be 63%. So you can see our profit. And obviously, since Amber helps to uh, run the Alpha Dap shop, everything is set to the UK. But um, 59, 50, we'll just say $59, since I'm assuming most of our people watching are in the US. Um, but this is a really, really great tool that can help you to make sure that you're estimating in things like your fees, like your transaction fees, things that, you know, a lot of people I see, they'll, they'll get their their first payment from Etsy and they'll say Etsy took, you know, almost half of my sale. Well, no, they added up all of your listing fees at 20 cents per listing. You know, they're adding in, you know, your transaction fees. They're adding in all of these fees and deducting that from that sale. And it can, you know, for a lot of people, when they don't know that, it can come as a huge surprise where they think that half of, you know, that they're losing like 50% per listing, but that's not necessarily true. It's just that if you have made that sale and it's the only sale that you've made, that's where all of your listing fees and things are going to deduct from. So it's important to understand Etsy's listing fees. I've actually got a really great video on my channel that covers all of Etsy's listing fees, and it talks a little bit more in depth about this tool. Um... We've got the calendar, you know, fun holidays, things to plan for, hashtag generator. It can take some of the terms that you use um, in your listings and create hashtags. We've got a cool little shortcut button that you can add into your browser where you can analyze some listings, though there may be something fun that's coming soon. Can't talk about it yet. Who knows? But, maybe. But there may be something fun. Um, but adding this into your bookmarks bar at the top of the page, you can do a little bit of analyzing of your listings, um, you know, and, and click on it and bring it into E-Rank or, or listings of other shops that you might be interested in looking at, like your competitors. The Sites tool, this is a newer um, tool that we added. And a lot of people have misused this tool, I've noticed. Um, the sites tool is great for comparing, for example, maybe you've got some bloggers and you want to know which blogger to work with, or you're trying to decide what marketplaces to sell on. Let's do Etsy.com and uh, GoImagine.com, for example. And you want to know which of these sites is more popular. Which one should I sell on? Is GoImagine really that popular? Well, we take a look and we can see that Etsy is definitely uh, more popular than Go Imagine. But we can see, <laughs> look very, very carefully though at Go Imagine. Look at it. It's, slowly trending up. Yep. Very, very slowly. Yep, it's got a nice slow climb. So this is a fun tool to play with if you just want to compare marketplaces. Um, I use it, you know, if I every once in a while will like, come across a company and I'm, I'm unfamiliar with the company and I'm like, ooh, is this a trustworthy brand? I'll pop them in to see if yeah, they're and popular. You, and you can see if they were to go from somewhere like, like if we were comparing a, like say our website and maybe a competitor pops up and they start here and they're just like, Wah! they just skyrocket to the top. It's probably artificial traffic. It's probably not real. Yeah, there might. I don't know. I think that this is their ranking, their actual. Right. And you can create artificial traffic to a website using oh. bots. Interesting. All right. And then last tool that I want to cover, that way you guys have at least a minute to ask some questions, <laughs> is our trend tools. Trend Buzz, I absolutely love this tool. It's going to allow you to scroll through different marketplaces. That way you can see the most popular products. Um, you can also toggle by country and time frame. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but this is going to also provide you with a little search trend graph so you can get an idea, for example, on Etsy, what those top 100 most search keywords were. So um, past 30 days, minimalist has been huge on Etsy. Wall art has been huge on Etsy. Summer jewelry uh, looks like it was pretty popular and it was very popular last year. But this just kind of gives you an idea of some of the terms that are popular now. However, 
I really love the monthly trend report because this tool, if you want to try to predict what might be trending, for example, for Christmas this year, it's really cool to go back and see what people were searching for around Christmas last year. That way you can get a better idea of what type of products that you should be making this year. I would even go back as far as October for yeah. Christmas ideas. I'm going to do November specifically just because October Last we minute shoppers so give a better idea. Yeah. So gift gifts, not very accurate, but personalized jewelry, um, personalized gifts, holiday decor, Taylor Swift. Obviously, you can't use that term. Um, and no, you can't use the Eras tour thing either. Yeah. Yes, we know they're all over Etsy, but I'm sure somebody will hit them with it. Now, ear earrings, we can look at this trend graph. Obviously, they were very popular around the holidays. They're mm -hmm. still pretty popular now. And this little flame icon means that this was a very popular search term yesterday on Etsy. So this is a good indicator that earrings are going to be something really popular. Personalized gift, gift for the home, Christmas ornaments, winter clothing, rings, gift for pet. Um... I like to go in and try to find things that are really specific. Uh, do it yourself. So maybe some like little do it yourself kits. Um, advent calendars were highly searched in November. So that tells me that if you make advent calendars, look, those start being searched for in August. You would want to get those listed right away because those searches begin in August. You can also filter by different categories as well. So if you wanted to see what POD shirts were popular, we can see that, you know. <laughs> Disney shirts. <laughs> right, of course. There's always going to be people searching for them. It doesn't mean that it's okay to make them. That's why yeah, there's a big orange warning up here. But Christmas shirt, Thanksgiving shirt. We can see Thanksgiving shirts started uh, being searched for in July. That's where mm -hmm. we see that first spike. So getting those Thanksgiving shirts listed right away would be a good idea for those of you who do POD. Get that stuff listed. Um, I think that that's it. Aside from the hot button, you can click on this button and get a list of terms that were... Um, that didn't take me to the hot, did it? I need to filter by yesterday. I don't know why that didn't give me yesterday. Starting out. There we go. So we can see some different terms that are spiking. Halloween, you can see, um, let's see, personalized is popping up as well. Summer jewelry starting to kind of trend down because obviously, you know, we're at the end of summer. Um, Barbie font, again, and because the movie just came out. Not safe to use, but it is highly searched. Enamel pins, groomsman gifts. As we go into fall, there's going to be a lot more weddings. So lots of good ideas, um, but I hope that this helped you guys. I know that this was probably information overload. Main things that I want everybody to really focus on are, you know, identifying what it is that you want to do. So for example, keyword tool for keyword research, tracking your competitors, uh, oh. trying to figure out, you know, what tags they're using or, um, you know, how, how are their sales today? If your sales are really bad today, how are their sales today? Oh, their sales are bad today too. Well, that means that, you know, Etsy's just having a slow day. There's so many different things that you can learn. Uh, for those of you who ship products around the holiday season, I highly recommend checking out that delivery status report. It's a great tool that can kind of keep you on track. And that way, if you notice that a package has been delayed, you can reach out to the customer early and say, Hey, you know, I was checking tracking. I noticed that your package was delayed. Um, this is common for this time of year, but I, I did want to let you know that it might be a day or so late from what the estimated delivery time is. Um, I will keep an eye on it. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Well, thank so. you for your donation, Anthony. Oh, really thank you, that. Anthony. We only have about five minutes, so we won't have a lot of time for questions. But All right. We got $222 or $21, $21 in donations for water.org. We appreciate you guys so much. Um, we are going to continue donating to water.org until the end of the month. So we do appreciate everybody who has donated so far. I just scrolled um, up a little bit. I'm not going to scroll up super duper far because most of it was questions for Anthony. Yeah. Thank you for hanging out in the chat and, and answering some of these, uh, some of these questions, Anthony.
Question about spelling and getting noticed. Typo squatting is definitely a thing. I have two typos in my best-selling item. How much do misspellings matter? If they're in your bestsellers, um, I would just leave them alone. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't touch them. Um, as silly as that is. Obviously, there there are always people who ask me, you know, oh, people commonly when they search for, you know, this term, a lot of times they misspell it. Should I put the misspelling in our tags? Um, don't do that because Etsy will correct that spelling. They will, you know, when somebody types in that query, Etsy yeah. will understand what it is that they're trying to search for. So it's better to make sure that you're using the, you know, the correct terms. If you've got a listing that's selling really, really well, I wouldn't touch it even if there is a misspelling in there. That's just me, though. Um, Anthony, do you have an opinion on that? That's 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 a really obscure question. If you have a bestseller and you find a small typo, should you just go ahead and leave it alone or should you change it? I would leave it alone. Do you set a superstar keyword for your entire shop as well as each listing? Um, so I think it really depends on what you sell. Um for shops that have a good overarching theme, I think it's great to have something that you're known for because Etsy, you know, they start to kind of identify what it is that you are, that you want to be known for. If they see it across all your listings, if, you know, your whole shop is about specialty handbags, you know, beautiful, handmade, high quality handbags, and somebody is looking for a beautiful, high quality handbag, maybe Etsy's more likely to recommend the shop that they know sells high quality handbags and has lots of good reviews for high quality handbags. So it that would be, you know, a superstar keyword that could apply to all the listings. But it's also like an overarching theme that applies to the entire shop. And maybe that's a niche. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's, you know, um specifically gifts for mom and you've got a lot of little listings under that gifts for mom theme. Maybe you've got, you know, little purses and little handbags and slippers and t-shirts and they're all themed around moms but mom is the overarching theme, then maybe that is also a superstar keyword that you would want to add. Whenever I add a new listing or a fresh listing the next day, all my traffic drops to zero. Would you have any idea why that is, please? If you add a new listing or refresh a listing, all of your traffic drops to zero? I'm assuming they need for that listing. Yeah, for that listing? Because you shouldn't... You're Because if you're adding that listing... To your shop, your whole shop shouldn't be dropping to zero. That sounds more like a bug to me. That doesn't sound right. I don't have any answer for you, but I would definitely reach out to Etsy directly and ask them. Not sure what uh, Anthony's pointing to there. Oh. Unless it was Ginger's comment. We'll get to it. I'm going to go down to Ginger's question, and then that's where I'm going to stop. Because okay. we don't have a lot of time. Um, I sell jewelry and have to... And I have had top ranking listings for a couple of months, then they go down eventually. What are some things I can do to maintain the top rankings or prevent them from going down? I know this is a difficult question, but I thought I would ask. Well, there are a lot of things that contribute to your rank that you can um, impact, but ultimately the best signals that you can send to Etsy are, are having those listings sell. That's why in, you know, Handmade Alpha Academy and, you know, here on my YouTube channel, I talk about, you know, building a social media presence, driving some of your own traffic. Um, having an email list, that's something that I exclusively teach in Handmade Alpha Academy, but you can totally wing it on your own if you, you know, use something like MailChimp. Um, that way, you can still ensure that even if, you know, you're not bringing in a lot of traffic from SEO, from, you know, organic search, you're still driving some traffic to that listing because those listing quality scores, that, that positive history that, you know, that Etsy is recognizing for your listings, those are things that can help you to really maintain and grow that rank. Um, down below in my free Etsy SEO toolbox, it's the Etsy SEO Oodles toolbox. That includes a free workshop that talks about the seven factors that Etsy tells us influences our rank. And there are more factors than that that Etsy doesn't tell us about, but there are seven that we know that we can influence. Um, that's a free workshop. I highly recommend signing up for that. It comes with a ton of videos and resources, but the very first video in that talks specifically about the factors that influence your rank and the factors that you can, you know, actually, um, you know, work on that you can influence in order to rank higher. Will selling in person affect your ranking if you have the card reader linked to your Etsy shop? More than likely, a sale is a sale. Well, we, that one's really hard though. We aren't sure. Um, and I believe that we've had a couple people ask Etsy and we've gotten mixed answers. So right now we 
don't know. I know that it deducts... Unless Anthony's heard something recently. I haven't heard any uh, updates, but yeah. I would probably treat it as it probably counts exactly the same as any other sale. It deducts from your shop quantity, but that would be one that you would need to ask Etsy about. And I, I believe we have, and I don't think that we've gotten a solid answer, but don't be afraid to keep bugging them about it. Is it a good idea to set your ad budget to $1,000? I've started doing that and I'm losing money this month, but it's getting me consistent sales. That is, don't do things that are making you lose money. That's gambling. It's just like Dragon House said, is it good to let the uh, boat flood as long as the fish are filling in too? Yeah. So not, not necessarily. I mean, if it gets you to a point where you're making consistent sales after the ad stop, then sure. But... If you stop the ads and then you stop sales, then you're still right. you're still you're still in the red. So you didn't benefit from that at all. Like Anthony always says, you know, don't burn cash to keep yourself warm. Don't exactly. You, it's you are gambling, and if you are okay throwing that money away for the sake of gambling, you know, don't bet your house though. Like it's okay to go to the casino and lose money if that's what you want to do. If you know that you have that money to lose, but you know that it's. It's eating into your profits. I I wouldn't. A thousand dollars is just a lot. That's too much. That is far so, far too much. If you're making like a hundred thousand a year on it, a thousand maybe sure. There are a lot. But of, I mean, you're still looking at like almost a little over ten percent of your income just on ads, and that's way too much. And if there are so many Etsy gurus who say that you got to max out your ad budgets or or advertise all of your listings, and it's. You know, they're they're basing their logic on rules of probability that if you put all of your ad or all of your money into ads, that eventually something will take off. And yeah, that could happen. But in most cases, it it happens exactly as you've described it, where, yeah, you'll make some money, but you're not making back the money that you're losing. Um, so check out that ROI calculator that we showed a few minutes ago. That might be helpful. All too. right. We're over our time. So I'm going to lightning round until we get down to gingers. Okay. With the spot on Etsy tool, why are only a couple listings seen there? Is it because of my title and tags? Are you monitoring um, those terms? You need to, there, there's a couple things that could be happening. Um, you're either not ranking high for those terms. Maybe it's because those terms are highly competitive and, and you know, you're just not being found on the top two um you know, Etsy pages for those terms, or are you looking, are you monitoring terms that you want to be found for? Make sure that you go into that monitor tool and you fill those out. You tell us over at E-Rank what terms you want to be found for, and we will let you know what page you're popping up on. But if you haven't monitored any additional terms, or maybe you only have one term in there, you're only going to see the terms that you have entered into mm -hmm. the monitor tool. Do all the keywords that come up on E-Rank fit as keywords on Etsy? I, I assume you mean the 20 character tag limit and no, but you can break those up. Et Etsy broad matches terms. So if you get a keyword, a long tail keyword, for example, that's too long to fit the 20 character tag limit, you can cut that in two and still broad match for that because Etsy is going to mix and match all of those words in every possible combination. Laura had asked any correlation between Etsy TV commercials and searches or sales. And Anthony had said oh. not really tighter correlation between Etsy newsletters and searches or sales. Awesome. I imagine there's some kind of correlation between people going to the website and not going to the website. Otherwise, they likely wouldn't continue paying for ads on TV. But probably not specific searches. But yeah, probably not specific searches. Maybe every once in a while, somebody's like, that's a cool necklace. I want to find that Etsy. I think it's more about you brand know. awareness. That's yeah, what it's, they're... It's, it's making people aware that they exist. And Etsy ads on TV never point to a specific product. They're not saying go buy this exact item. They're saying, hey, we have things for everybody. It's the same as like Coke running an ad, right? Everybody knows what Coca-Cola is. They don't show you ads because you've never heard of Coca-Cola before. They're reminding you that they exist. That's what TV ads are really for. It's market dominance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm working on editing my pictures for my Halloween stickers. I don't have all 10 pictures, but I want to get them listed at least. Should I list them with five or six pictures and yeah. add more later? Yeah. You Absolutely. can't sell what you don't have listed. Absolutely. There's no, the algorithm isn't counting how many pictures you have. You're, the number of photos that you have don't have any impact on the algorithm. It's just it, better, better informing your shoppers and, and keeping them on that page for longer in order to increase the probability that they add that product into their cart. But the, the algorithm isn't counting how many photos you have. Just just think of every photo as an opportunity to convert that shopper into a buyer. Um, and you guys probably saw when we were looking at some of the listings uh, from the Alpha Adapt shop. Not we don't even have photos for all of our listings. 
And last question I'm going to do, uh, you said it'd be best to do free shipping. I get you just add the shipping, but if you have a VIP discount, how do you factor that in without the price skyrocketing? Your normal? I... First of all, you cannot increase your price in order to host a sale. That is against the well, law in the United States. I didn't, I never said that it would be best to do free shipping. I did not say that. If you're talking about the post that you saw on my social medias yesterday, I did not say that it would be best to do that. I said that it is worth experimenting with. If you can manage it, every target audience is going to react differently to how yeah. shipping prices are factored into item cost. And it's going to depend entirely on what you sell, how much that item is, how much that item is going to be once the shipping price is added into that item, and how your target customers are going to interpret that shipping cost. So it's worth experimenting with. Um, and really, you know, there's no such thing as free shipping. There is only shipping included. Etsy does not give, you know, free shipping to, to anything. You are just adding that price of shipping into your total item cost. So when doing that, I recommend, you know, just testing it for a while, seeing how it works for you. And if it doesn't, it's totally okay to revert back. <laughs> um, there's, there's, you know, on mobile, you do have the benefit of ranking higher in search if you offer free shipping, but that's just for mobile shoppers. Um and and honestly, I see shipping costs all the time in top ranking products on the mobile app. So I don't think that you're only like on the first page going to see products that ship free. Um, but Etsy does tell us that they get prioritized a bit in search. Um, if you do a VIP discount, how do you factor that in without the price skyrocketing from your norm? Again, you just factor it in. You always assume if you're doing a VIP discount, mm -hmm. you always assume that every single sale you make will be at whatever the highest cost coupon that you offer in your shop. So when you price your products, always do that with the with whatever your highest discount that you plan to offer, price those products with that high discount in mind, including whatever costs, you know, you're factoring into shipping if you are tying the shipping cost into your overall item price. Um I, I, and you know, when you make a full price sale and somebody doesn't use a discount code, that's almost like Christmas. It's it's super exciting when you get one of those sales. But always make sure that you are factoring in whatever your largest discount is. Um, I, my largest discount for my first shop was 30%. And every time I priced my products, I always made sure that I was assuming that every customer was getting 30% off. And then when I made full price sales, it was like a celebration. It was super exciting. And more people made full price sales than they did with you know a coupon code. But it allowed me to make sure that I was always profitable. <laughs> All right, we are good. That's about all we have time for. Normally, we have a little bit more time to answer questions, but obviously, this was a long topic today. Thank you, Anthony, for and, stopping out and helping answer questions. Um, Anthony said that if there were any questions today about E-Rank that we weren't able to get to, or if you are watching the replay, make sure that you reach out to... You can go I'll, ahead I'll go ahead and type it in the chat for you guys. Support at E-Rank.com. You can also click in the bottom right-hand corner of your E-Rank screen when you're logged in. There's a little blue circle with the E-Rank logo in it. Tap that. There's a little option to message us, and you can send that message right to our team. Any questions that you may have. There's also the E-Rank Facebook group where you can ask questions and Pam Duffy and I go live on the E-Rank channel every Thursday. I haven't been there the last two Thursdays because I had a meeting with YouTube and we were on vacation last week, but I will be here this Thursday. And over on the E-Rank YouTube channel, you can also watch our past replays. You can get amazing videos that walk you through the process of using some of our most popular tools. Pam creates tons of videos over there that I highly recommend checking out if you have any questions. And, and also check out erank.com slash blog. We have tons of blog posts that can help you with most tools. But um, guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Thanks for being patient with us today with our little bit of brain fog mm -hmm. after, you know, being on a long vacation. And um, we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. We for a second. Oh, yeah. I have an idea for, for, for the song I'm going to be working on this week. So. Oh, the outro yes. song? Yes. He's going to write us an outro song. I am going to write us an outro song. It's going to be fun. Awesome. Bye, guys.